Happy Tuesday, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us um, for a little conversation today about poetry. I think probably most of you know um, that Paraclete has a real heart for the mission of poetry and has for many, many years. Most recently, um, we have begun a new poetry line, the name of which is Iron Pen. And I just wanted to read a little bit about it because um, you might not all be familiar with the background behind the name of that line. So again, it's called Iron Pen. And um, the description starts with a quotation from Job. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. Outcast and utterly alone, Job pours out his anguish to his maker. From the depths of his pain, he reveals a trust in God's goodness that is stronger than his despair, giving humanity some of the most beautiful and poetic verses of all time. Paraclete's iron pen imprint is inspired by this spirit of unvarnished honesty and tenacious hope. So really those words from Job kind of give place to every single collection um, that Paraclete publishes. And uh, today is a great day for us because we have the official release of two of our um, new collections with, with um, Iron Pen. The first one we're going to talk about is Or And by Janine Marie Pitas. And this book was um, one of the winners of our 2021 Paraclete Poetry Prize. So it's a real celebration today to see it officially born into the world and available for purchase. Um, or and, I'm just going to make sure Katie okay, can see how beautiful this cover is, is um, just a beautiful collection. I think, I think what I'm going to do is read the um, endorsement that Scott Cairns gave to Janine. In uncommonly accomplished prose and verse, and with a remarkable, audible, canny, and compelling voice, these poems perform the sort of surprises that feel like long-held subconscious wisdom just now coming into our apprehension, just now, when we most need such wisdom. So I don't know how many of you received our email blast this morning that Katie put together for this book, but she really does describe everything um, that Janine expresses here. It's all about contrast. It's about stepping out into places where perhaps your faith hasn't quite caught up with you yet and being unafraid to relive things that are painful or that are still big question marks in your life or that are at the same time huge celebrations or victories or moments of pain or discovery um or and is such an interesting title and it really does capture everything that janine explores so congratulations to janine and we're so so happy that this book has now been born. So that's the first one. Happy birthday or and. Um, the other book that is officially out today, although the big celebration won't be until May, is this incredible collection, Taking Root in the Heart, which is um, a celebration of 34 poets who have been published in the Christian century over the past 25 years. And our very good friend, Jill Bongartner, is the editor of this collection. I've had the incredible honor over the past few weeks of um, emailing and conversing with several of the poets who are featured. Um, we'll be publishing a series on social media of videos of these poets reading some of the poems from this collection. And I, I can't even tell you, there's something about conversing with these people whose words have already attained such an incredible place of honor and and you can still talk with them today it's just amazing to me every time I, I got to talk with Sydney Lee this morning and it was just such a delightful 15 minutes I'll never forget it as long as I live so anyway um you're all probably very familiar with Jill's work as a poet and so many people have been receiving the Christian century for years and years and years so this is really um a collection that I would say obviously is for poetry lovers, but also is quite a powerful tool for a practice that's growing lately, which is using poetry as a devotional practice. It might not 
be that you've had personal experiences with exactly what the poet is writing about, but I guarantee if you take just a minute every day, choose one of these poems, spend a few minutes reading it quietly, go back, read it out loud, um, explore some of the images, really pay attention to the words that are chosen, um, you'll, you'll get a lot out of it. Poetry lovers know what I'm talking about, but those of you who maybe aren't as familiar with poetry or haven't always been fans, I really highly recommend it. There's so much variety in this book and um, Jill has done an incredible job putting it together. Um, just flipping onto the back and um, our good friend Sarah Arthur wrote a lovely endorsement um, which I think describes the book so well. She says, if there's such a thing as a fine arts gallery for poetry, this is it. Baumgartner is well familiar with her subjects, gifted with extraordinary sensitivity to their uniqueness, but it's her ear for how they speak to and through one another that makes this curation unforgettable. So that's new today. Um, the big celebration in Chicago is May 11th, and we'll really look forward to that. People can sign up to our mailing list and receive an email just on that tomorrow. Great. Thanks, Katie. Uh, so those books are available now. Now, here's another one that um, I'm so excited about. Christine Walters Paintner, the online abbess of the Abbey of the Arts. She lives over in Ireland, but um, she's born American. And this is our, is it our third? Our third mm -hmm. collection from um, Christine. First we had Dreaming of Stones, then Wisdom of Wild Grace, and now here we have Love Holds You, Poems and Devotions for a Time of Uncertainty. Um, I'll just open this book so you can see. Um, this book we did with French flaps, and inside there are hand-drawn illustrations that accompany Christine's poem and then every poem has a question or more than one question that allows the reader again to really take time with this poetry as a devotional practice there's even space for journaling if you want to add your own thoughts in here and um this poetry all came i don't i think i'm telling the truth here it most of it came from the pandemic time it's not necessarily related to COVID, but for Christine, the pandemic years <laughs> held a lot of um, personal difficulty. She experienced loss, she experienced her own health issues, all the huge questions that so many of us had, um, the difficulty and challenges and uncertainty. So this poetry really does allow you to take the time to feel all of those things without judgment, but with an open heart to exploring what God, what love might have for you, a path through those things. Um, as, she, as she noted to me in a conversation once, it also does allow you time to just sit in the darkness of those questions, um, again, without shame or without, without um, judgment. I don't, I don't know how else to say it, but they're, um, each one really is such a gift. She talks a lot about her ancestors, um, that reality and help of knowing where we've come from um, and how there will be a way through. So um, Poetry Month is coming up, but also this, this is just such a lovely um, devotional that could be a lovely gift for Mother's Day, or I know there's graduations and all kinds of things coming up in the spring. Um, Christine's work is just so, so beautiful. And the packaging of this volume in particular in itself is such a gift um, combined, you know, obviously with her words and again with these images. Uh, just lovely and quite literally poetry as devotional practice, um, which again is becoming more and more popular these days. Um, I also, I told Kay I wanted to take a moment to talk about this book one more time. Um, we're just so thrilled with this anthology that Micah Maddox and Sally Thomas edited together. And um, I wanted to remind everyone about it in case you haven't had a chance to see it or get your own copy yet. Um, All American Voices, again, such variety. Um, I happened to open just now to Dana Joya's 
poem about the seven deadly sins, which I think most contemporary poetry fans will know and just puts a smile on your face instantly. Um, Mark Jarman, he, he, I, I, Franz, right? There's just so, so, so many incredible poets featured in here. Um, Paraclete happens to publish collections by several of them too, which it, 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 it's just such a delight to be able to um, champion these voices. And again, um, using these poems as a devotional practice has been so valuable for me. I know some churches are beginning to do it, um, use collections like this and studies together. So I, if you haven't, again, had a chance to look at it, I highly recommend getting your hands on a copy. A lot of libraries are carrying it too, so. Um, it's available in both um, hardcover and paperback. Yeah, that's right. Um, so again, just highly recommend it. Get to know these voices. Um, they're, they're just amazing and they speak to any place you've ever been or could imagine yourself going um, with such generosity and such truthfulness and um, such grace. So anyway, I guess it's a little bit of a shorter conversation today, but Paraclete loves poetry. We love our poets. Um, we count it such a privilege to make their words available to all of you. So, um, okay, Katie's going to remind me that if you use the coupon code Spring Poems exclamation <laughs> point, <laughs> you'll get 25% off all our poetry collections today. This week. This week, this whole week. And um, next month is poetry, National Poetry Month. So look for lots of poetry features from us in the weeks to come. Thank you so much.